But we want to bring some clarity to this, really help you understand, especially if you've had this vaccine or you were scheduled to get it. So we want to bring in the conversation, Baptist Beaches cardiologist, Dr. Pamela Rama, who's on her way to work this morning and is joining us now live on the phone to talk more about this latest development. Thank you for taking some time out for us today. Uh, good morning. You know, first, we want to point out, as the numbers show, this is very rare. It's out of an abundance of caution. But if you've had the J&J &J vaccine, what should you be aware of if you are concerned about this potential adverse side effect? Well, you know, this is a very fluid situation. It appears to uh, that the, the symptoms occur within two weeks of getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And the important thing is recognizing the symptoms. And it is just let me reiterate, it is a very, very rare recurrence. There's been 7 million people who's received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And you're talking about six people out of 7 million. Yes, definitely. You know, so we don't want people to feel as though they're in danger because to your point, you know, within two weeks of the vaccination, these women started to have these adverse side effects. But should people be concerned even beyond that period? And then do talk about those symptoms that in case you do feel them, you might want to contact your doctor. Right. So this is a very different kind of uh, blood clot, right? So we know about pulmonary embolism. This is really not what it is. It's called cerebral venous thrombosis. We're in a clot forms in the brain, the cerebral vein, um, and, and it causes symptoms like headaches, the loss of vision or visual changes, um, uh, confusion, coma, headaches, and seizures. So very different pre presentation. So you have to just be aware of the symptoms. It doesn't look like there's a risk beyond the two weeks because we haven't had cases beyond two weeks of getting the vaccine. Okay, so that's good information. So if you had the vaccine, you know, prior to two weeks, then you're probably okay. But again, those symptoms are very clear. And if you were to have those, you would definitely want to contact your doctor. So when you and I were talking minutes ago, you said there is a difference between the AstraZeneca vaccine, which has not been approved by the FDA, and the J&J &J vaccine, as people do consider the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine. Can you kind of talk about those differences so people do have some assurance that they've had these other vaccines, that they are safe? Right. So there are very different vaccines. The Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine does not, uh, does not need a vector to get into the, the cell. So they use the mRNA, which is a messenger RNA that stimulates our bodies to recognize the spike proteins. The difference is that the, the, the uh, Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca uses a virus, the adenovirus, uh, and it's a benign virus. It doesn't cause any infection, but the virus carries the DNA into the, the cells, and the cells are able to recognize the spike protein of COVID. So, so it's a very different process, and it doesn't seem that these complications or this side effects were seen in the Pfizer and Moderna, as opposed to the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca, which you know is not available in the United States. Right. Now, the women were between the ages of 18 and 48. And as you mentioned, it is super early to know if there's any commonalities between them. But as far as this very rare blood clot, is there an age group or is there some type of demographic that's more at risk for this? Well, it seems right now that they've only described this among women. And the one thing that they, look, they looked at is the platelet count of these women went down. So the platelet is one of the, the you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a part of your blood, right? So the platelets are clotting factors in your blood. And it seems like an antibody is produced to attack this platelet. And, and that causes the thrombosis or the, the venous thrombosis. The reason why this is very important is because regular medications to treat blood clots can be dangerous in this setting. So, you know, if you had a blood clot in your, your veins or in your pulmonary embolism or, a, a, you know, a blood clot in your legs, we would normally treat you with heparin. However, this type of blood clot associated with low platelet count, you really don't want to give this patient platelet. Uh, I'm sorry, heparin. And so patient, the doctor should be, you need to let your doctor know if you have this symptom and you're diagnosed with this, that you've had the, this type of vaccine because the treatment is very different. All right, Dr. Rama, thank you so much for taking some time out. Again, very rare. We're talking six women after millions of people have been vaccinated. Before the time being, the, Jacks, the J Johnson & Johnson vaccine is being recommended to be pulled here in Florida and in our local area. They are doing so. So please keep that in mind. If you are planning to get vaccinated, you'll probably have to get a different vaccine for now. And we're continuing to follow this breaking news alert here on The Morning Show. And we'll be right back after the break.